Full disclosure, we had absolutely zero intention of traveling here, but after speaking to many locals, yeah, they pretty much changed our plans for us. Amateur backpackers who somehow managed to travel around Europe for a whole year for under $10,000. From working on sailboats to hitchhiking across three countries, our budget travels have been anything but boring. We're about to start a trip through the infamous Balkans, eight countries in six weeks. Can we do it? Subscribe to find out. Good morning, we are in Ohrid here in Macedonia and according to locals, if you haven't seen Ohrid, you haven't seen Macedonia, so here we are. Our first stop is to go and do something that we haven't done in probably about five months. Although the snow and ice everywhere, it's actually pretty warm. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. As of today, the 28th of January, if you are trying to get to Bulgaria, you need a PCR test as well as a vaccination certificate. And if you are here in Ohrid, this is one of the places where you can do it. The general hospital, apparently. I'm really not looking forward to this. Problem. Okay, so. It seems like the COVID testing here in Ohrid itself closed around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, it is now 5 to 11 and it will not start testing till tomorrow at the same time again. But we are trying to get to Bulgaria tomorrow evening, which means that if we take a test tomorrow morning, we'll only get it at about 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, by which time we would have already most likely crossed the border which means that we can't actually get onto the bus so we're facing a couple of scenarios here there is another place to go and get a test done which is at the airport but there's no more buses running to the airport today which means that we'd most likely have to catch a taxi and it is quite a far way away which means that will be a very expensive taxi ride or what we could do is spend an extra night in Ohrid and get our test done tomorrow morning get our test Results. That evening, yeah. results in the evening, and leave to Sofia the next day. Now, if we have to weigh up the the financials of it it's all... It's also risky, because I don't know if I trust that the airport is doing it, because there's a bit of a language barrier going on here. So, like, Marek understood it as the buses have stopped for the day, I understood it as the airport tests have finished for the day. So, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's unreliable to know whether there will actually be tests happening at the airport right now. And also the test here in Ohrid costs 35 euros, whereas if we had to take the bus tomorrow and go back to Skopje and spend the evening there, it would cost us 60 euros mm. per, test, per test, which means that we're basically saving... 60? 25, 50. Yeah. We're saving 50 on tests by getting the test done here. That's, that covers a night of accommodation. That covers a night of accommodation. And a lot, actually. Okay, I think we've got yeah. our. <laughs> yeah. I think we've got That's the resolution. What we're, doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to spend an extra night here, which is not a problem. This place is really nice. It's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> On we go. Next step, we need to go back to our accommodation, rebook for another night, and also get in touch with the tour company that we're partnering up with in Bulgaria, and just shift the tour a day later. Now you may be wondering, why don't you just do that on your phone? Well, we actually haven't had a working SIM card for almost two months already and it's actually worked out pretty fine so far it just takes a little bit of extra planning so we just plan our routes before we leave the wi-fi zone the balkans is actually really well connected so if you ever do struggle with not having a sim card you can just pop into a cafe get a coffee and use their wi-fi since we're here let's show you what 14 euro 50 a night is getting us jingle town aka the bathroom and shower bedroom kitchen big old lounge area Lake View and the office. 
done. Accommodation booked, and we even managed to get it for 11 euros. So we got a discount of three euros. I'm pretty happy with that. A money saving tip that we've learned. So if you make use of booking.com or Airbnb to book accommodations, and you get to a place and you think to yourself, listen, yeah, would actually like to stay a little bit longer. Instead of rebooking your accommodation through those sites, rather go straight to the host and say, we'd like to stay longer. Can we extend this booking, but outside of the booking.com or the Airbnb at a lower rate? That's exactly what we did now. And that's exactly how we actually managed to get three euros, three euros discount per night. And we've actually done that a few times before. So when we were staying in Kotor, we managed to get another three euros per night there just by using that method. It's worked pretty well for us so far. Pretty happy. Okay, but it's finally time to go and see off it. So we're walking here along an old bazaar of Ohred, and you can pretty much find an old bazaar in every city in the Balkans. But there's one thing that you can only find in Ohred, and you can find a lot of them here in this old bazaar. They're called Ohred pearls. Now the reason you can only find them here is because they are not like normal pearls, they're man-made and they're made using the scales of a particular type of fish that can only be found in Lake Orkrid. And the legend goes that a Russian immigrant way back when, I don't know how many years ago, came here to Orkrid and he somehow knew this method of making the pearls and he shared this method with two families. And since then they've kept that a secret and they continue to make these pearls and when people come to visit Orkrid it's like one of those amazing souvenirs to take home because you can only find them here. They're really beautiful, they look pretty much <laughs> like normal pearls and apparently they last a lot longer than normal pearls. So we're originally planning on walking to the top of the fortress, but honestly, we got a pretty decent drone shot, so we don't really feel like walking all that much higher. <laughs> We've appreciated so many views already. I'm getting hangry, which is a bit dangerous for Marek. So we're gonna head back down and find some food. <laughs> All the European heritage is right here. But my name is Slavia and I am a philosopher. I can express myself laconically. I need only three minutes to tell the European history. Have you got three minutes? <laughs> three minutes? Yeah. European history, three minutes? Okay. On the northern side of this lake, these two small hills protecting us from the fresh wind from the north in winter. This man started out really friendly and proceeded to tell us about the different churches that surrounded the lake. After a minute had passed, he stopped and said that in order to hear the final two minutes, we had to pay him. Now this wasn't really the information we were interested in, as we rather wanted to find out more about the lake itself. So after telling him thank you, but would rather not hear the final two minutes of his speech, yeah, we were not ready for what happened next. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. What do you mean, thank you? Where is the money? You want? Um, sorry, I, we didn't know that was... We just thought you were being what friendly. What were you thinking? Well, that you were being friendly. <laughs> what do you I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People come up to you and serve you for free everywhere you go. Well, it's an apartheid state, apparently, for a long time, but for a long time also no more, as far as I know, and everybody else does. I think it's you should no, tell people that you expect no money when you come up to them. It's you should no tell them. <laughs> it's no longer slavery in your country for a long while now. Right? Yeah. So you should give up your habit. Yo, what, what habit? bro. What, what habit? <laughs> Sorry, so no, no. I'm not, I'm okay. not no. Thank Sorry. You. That just took a turn for the worst. Very, 
very fast. This has happened to us a few times already now where a person comes up to you, starts a conversation, and to then they honest, expect payments afterwards. To be honest, when this happens, uh, like our immediate reaction is, oh, this is just a friendly person. Yeah, they come up to you so nicely and friendly. Who just wants friendly. to talk to us about their country or their history or whatever. Like to us, we just think it's a person just being friendly and nice. And I guess from now on, we should know that it's actually not genuine. It's people that are offering a service. So, so basically, basically, when we said no, we're okay for the last two minutes of the chat, it it just went downhill very quickly. He basically Ew. started talking about apartheid in South Africa, and he told he us that we must really let go of our slave us. habits back home. Oh and he told goodness. us to go and honestly, he told us to go and kill ourselves. Yeah, he, th those are his exact words. He said you should just go and kill yourselves. Like. I don't know how that turned how did so that happen? terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is really cool, but there's also poo raining down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a beautiful. This is crazy. <laughs> Well, that's a very fast way to feel better. <laughs> yeah. In other news, we have finally made it down to the waterfront here in Ochrit. And just a word on what just happened. Things like this, <clears throat> things like this can happen anywhere in the world. I'm personally quite shaken up right now, but I always find it important to just remember that you can't control what people say and do to you because that things like that horrible things like that can happen anywhere but you can just control how you react to it and how you allow it to affect you so we are going to carry on with our day we are going to enjoy the beautiful place that we are in we're going to eat some yummy food and just let that go because clearly there's some issues there for that person and we are not going to let that affect the rest of our day. We're walking along this beautiful promenade right along by Lake Ochrid which is a very famous lake because it's the biggest and largest lake in Europe. It's also the most biodiverse and it lies between two countries, Macedonia and Albania, but the biggest percentage of the lake lies in Macedonia. Oh, touch the water, we can go now. <laughs> How cold! It's not bad actually. Maybe it's just because my hands are frozen. Uh, um. <laughs> my lady. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> been over an hour since we last said that we're gonna go and get some food and we've been looking for fish because we're at the lakeside and mm -hmm. we want to eat some fish but if it's struggled so much we've settled for something that we love just as much a dough. Today's been a real roller coaster of emotions and just events but we are only focusing on the positive things we had a really good day and I hope that with us sharing even the bad things that happened today can hopefully just shed light on some of the things that can happen while you travel and maybe make you aware that things like that can happen and maybe you can be more prepared for it. I know for myself, for us, in future, we'll just be more direct with asking people when people approach us, we're just gonna straight up be like, are you being friendly or are you here for money? Like, what's the scenario here? What are we dealing with? So we don't find ourselves in those tricky situations again and it becomes so heated. We're so happy that I actually made the trip and we came all the way here to yeah. Auckland. It was definitely like 
away from the way that we were supposed to be going. Completely we kind of went opposite backwards, direction. And now yeah. we're gonna have to move forward again. But we're happy that we came here. It's really relaxed. Mm. It's not by the sea, but the seaside, by the lakeside. You've got the mountains around mm. you. So it's just a really nice place mm. to be. But this pretty much wraps up our time in North Macedonia. It's been a really good experience. We've really enjoyed learning more about the culture. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.